Good morning, everybody. My name is Bill Gilchrist, joining you from my home this morning. I'm the executive director of the Anton Art Center in Mount Clemens, Michigan. I'm very glad that you're able to join us for our first ever virtual studio visit with artist Carol Sharp. Um, Carol's from here in Mount Clemens, and she's a class artist. Um, I will quickly introduce, uh, introduce also um, my colleagues from the Art Center, Peggy D. Mercurio, who is our education coordinator, and uh, Conrad Schmerheim, our graphic artist. They will be monitoring the chat box today and helping to bring up any questions that uh, you have for Carol as she goes through um, for her studio visit. Um, <clears throat> I seem to be having a little bit of trouble with the app that I'm using to run this, so please bear with me as we're <clears throat> moving forward here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Carol, would you like to go ahead and um, introduce yourself and, and start taking us on a bit of a tour here? Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for coming today. I'm Carol Sharp um, and I'm just learning how to use this selfie stick. So anyway, there we go. Let's see, there I am. Okay, so originally, yes, I grew up in Michigan. I grew up in Royal Oak, Michigan, Highland Park area. I moved back to Mount Clemens um, in 2018, September 2018. So I've been here about a year and a half now. Um, so finally getting moved in. So this is, uh, as my friends were saying, this is really the first time I've done anything like this in Michigan. So a lot of people have seen my work in Colorado, but not everybody's seen my work here in Michigan. So, so I'm just going to kind of take you on a little tour of my house. This is my you know, front door. Anyway, nothing real exciting. This is just my entrance. Actually, I'm going to switch over. There we go. So this is my entrance. So you can see I have um, some things here. This is, uh, this is a drawing, a drawing painting that I've been working on. It's called um, Greetings from Somewhere Else. And the story behind that is I went out to go for a walk. And I came back and there was a book that had fallen down on the floor. And the name of the book was Greetings from Somewhere Else. And so anyway, that, that anyway, it inspired me to name the painting after that. So um, this is my dining room. I do live in Mount Clemens, as Phil was saying. Um, if you can look out the windows, maybe you can see in the back there, I, I have a barn out there and I live on the um, Clinton River. So this, these are some of the pieces. Some of these are older pieces that, you know, I made in Michigan. That piece there is called um, Urban Shaman. That's my friend Keith Parker, who is also used to live in Denver and now lives in Detroit. Um, Sky Watcher there, that's a bus. I do portraits of people, take plaster castings directly from the face using alginate and plaster gauze. And then I um, make a mold of the face and then I take a piece of glass and put that in a kiln and slump the glass or melt the glass over the mold of the face. And then all the other pieces are taken from found objects, things, some of them are blown, some of them are plates, just all different kinds of things. And then I, I you know, put it together the same way Tiffany put together his lamps. So that's how the busts are made. Um, this, this lamp here that's called the violet flame, that's kind of um, about the energy, kind of the energy changes that are going on. This is another drawing that I did um, just this past winter. It's called the Cosmic Garden. And this piece here is called the Ancient Mother. Um, that, again, it's found objects, painted glass. Um, all of that is found objects, beaded pieces. Uh, you can kind of see some of the details on that. Um, this piece here is a painting that I did of my mother. I had a photograph um, from when her college graduation. So my mom had a stroke and about a year and a half later she passed. So I started the painting right after she had the stroke and then I kind of went back in and reworked it after um, she passed. So it's kind of art therapy, but it's also um, 
anyway, pretty profound. It's I, this is one I live with. I don't know that I'll ever sell it until I die because it, uh, I don't know. It's a lot about my mom. Um, this is a piece right here. That's casted glass that I did when I went to Pilchuck. Pilchuck is a big glass school. It's in uh, North of Seattle. That's a school that Chihuly started. Um, this is the last piece I did before I left Denver. This is um, all the fish. I don't know, gone fishing. I guess it, Michigan was already beginning to influence me before I even left. Um, and then my living room. Um, a lot of these pieces in here are pieces some I've collected. This piece here is uh, Mount Blanca. That is a mountain down in South Central Colorado that um, the in Native Americans called it the Great One. And it was, I lived in Alamosa um, for quite a few, well, a year. And so that kind of had an effect on me. I, I got my collection of Buddhas and Madonnas, more artwork, lamps. Um, the drawing is a piece by a friend in Colorado, Bunny Rosenthal did that. Um, this is a lamp I did. This is, uh, this piece here is called Waiting Beauty. This is, um, these pieces over here are, I do angels. Um, I found the tops of these pieces are ceramic and they're from old pincushion dolls. So they're all antiques. So each piece is unique. I take take the you know the doll and then I blow the the skirt is blown glass and then the wings are leaves or um, glass leaves. This piece is called Lisa has some hidden parts, and that's that piece was in the Anton Center in the show the Green Show. This piece here is called Warrior John Paul. Again, that's a piece um, where it's a portrait piece. Um, this piece, I actually, the, the man, the young man who posted me on this piece, I was doing a demonstration at a school about how to do the face mask. And so he volunteered. And so that piece kind of came out of that. This piece on the wall is a lot of kind of about the virus, um, kind of about, you know, being isolated, but being together. So there's all different kinds of fish they are going different directions. There's there's even a group of fish that's kind of, you know, sequestered off. So these are, I've been doing some more 2D work since I've been here. People in Colorado haven't seen these probably. It's new to them for, for me to do 2D work. Um, so this is, this is my family room. Um, you can see some stained glass pieces there. You can kind of see the view out the window to the river there. Um, more more stained glass pieces this piece right here was one that I did that was my first born um that was first piece I ever did once I was taking stained glass classes this is a piece that's um blown glass um and then it assembled this piece here is kind of another I don't know I call it art therapy piece it's called the animal protection agency so it's it's got a doll and then there's there's like a gajillion different little toys and anyway it was just it was fun that was just a fun piece um these are some more angels that i made and there's more a view of the backyard we're going to be going out there in just a minute um Carol, before we go, there was a question um, from Greg about, was that a, a batik or batik? A batik. No. Okay. I don't know what, I don't know what PC was referring to. A batik. All right. Well, I'm heading down the basement now. So this is okay. kind of a different... Okay, so now I'm down the basement. This is um, this is just kind of put a bunch of lamps. A lot of these are smaller pieces that I've done. Um, 
I have some gift items here, things like, um, oh, uh, ring holders, um, uh, hearts, bottle, bottle stoppers, lamps. Uh, uh, Carol, you're freezing up. Are oh, I'm probably be down outside. All right. I don't know how. Oh, I. I it's because the the reception down here is great. So fine. I'll have to put these on Facebook. Um, these are okay. the door plate angels. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to head back up. Okay. The reception's better upstairs. Bummer. That's too bad. Yeah, we're happy we to share. Add... <clears throat> yeah, we're happy to share any photos that you'd like to send us, Carol. All right. Um, and the question about the batik was uh, the fish painting. Fish painting. No, it is the the um, the technique on that is where I you take you have a piece of paper and then you put uh, toilet I put toilet paper down and um, um, paper towel and then I soak the toilet paper and the paper towel with watercolors and then you can see where the, there's lines on there. And that was the pattern that was in the toilet paper, in the paper towel. And then wow. that soaks through. And then all the fish, all the individual fish are made um, with skins. Um, and when, when we go out to the studio, I'll show, I'll show another piece in process that kind of shows how to make the skins, that kind of thing. So that was a technique I, I learned just recently. So it's kind of, it's fun. It's really fun actually, because you can get some real interesting things. So this is my porch, which is not, but this is an area where I'm using to um, paint things. I'm, you know, I spray paint things. I bought some chairs, some stands. This is a bottle tree that I did um it's all blue recycled bottles there's blown glass beads in there there's um ceramic beads so there's a whole bunch of things there this is just kind of an assortment of outdoor pieces um the roosters and the chickens i did i made ceramic bases the heads were all pieces i found in thrift stores and then the ceramic bases i mosaiced on and then i Anyway, they can go outdoors, but they're kind of sitting in here now. This is another bottle tree that um, just blown glass and found objects. It's all kinds of things on there. So some of those are from the thrift store. Some of those are blown. So that's kind of that. Um, now I'm going to walk out to the studio and... So I do really like living here on the river. I think uh, it's just been gorgeous. And every day I see something, there's, I see raccoons, I see um, geese, herons, all different kinds of things. So this is the barn. This piece on the left here is a piece that I did. Um, I've done a lot with recycled cans. And those are those old grapes that used to, you can find them at the thrift store, you used to be able to. Um, and they're all tin cans and then they're all wired on to a piece of fencing. This piece here is from Dennis West, who was a pretty prominent artist in Colorado and he just passed away about a year or two ago. And I was lucky to get a piece of his. So this is the studio and Sorry, I locked the door. I'm just the Detroit in me. All right. Usually the music's blaring in here, but um, you can kind of see. Um, this is, I have a workbench here, and then there's a stair that goes up. 
um, just kind of a lot of different things. This is this is all storage, you know, hardware supplies, CDs, and then this is all storage of things that I use in pieces. So I have um, just boxes full of, you know, like stones or grass flowers or droplets or anyway, all pieces that I'm using. Um, I do do some welding. So that's all these things here are pieces Carol, that I use for welding. I try and get- You're, you're freezing up a bit yeah. again. I don't know um, if you might want to kind of okay. go closer to your door and um, okay. slowly pan. Okay, all right. Yep, all right. I think that's improving already. Okay, all right. So you can kind of see that I've got tables here. You can see some of the projects that round arch is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna refinish that, refurbish that and paint it. And then I'm gonna hang stained glass pieces from it. we will have droplets and rondelles, which are round circles. Um, there's more pieces here on, on the table there, that's the, all those metal pieces are gonna be an outdoor piece. I'll wire those onto a grid and that will be outdoors. Uh, I have, this is store, glass storage. I have a bandsaw, two grinders. This is a drill press that I've adapted to drill holes in glass. Over here on the other side, there's a, a uh, stand blaster, and then next to that is where I'll set up my torch. That's not fully set up, and then back there in the corner is my kiln. There's actually two kilns, and then next to that is my beveling machine, and then more storage, and then there's the welding area there. So um, let's. I, I'm going to try going upstairs and see if if we can do this. I don't know what the signal. I don't know if it'll be better or worse. Up here. Yeah. See, we can't even hear. Um, can you see it? Okay. Um, it's freezing up a bit. I can see the river. Okay. Okay. There's the river. This is the upstairs. Okay. Still freezing up or are we okay? Um, this is- It's moving a little bit now, but kind of uh, looks like a uh, stop motion. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Trying. All right. Well, okay. this is Thank what you. I was talking Sorry. about with the, the skins. Um, this is a piece kind of in process. So, I did, this is just a watercolor that I did. And then these are, they're skins. You take pictures from magazines and you put a Liquitex gel medium on it and then you rub the paper off the back. And it kind of gives you, uh, you know, it's a way you can get prints of things. So I have a whole bunch of them over here, um, kind of in process. This is a picture I took in Italy. When I went to Italy, that was just some ironwork. And anyway, there's all different. So there's a lot of different kinds of things. Here's a fish. This one came out of a magazine. So you can see it is, they're translucent. They let the light through. But so whatever color you paint, then you can, um, you know, it kind of shows through behind it. But you can do photographs. You can do all kinds of things. So anyway, the upstairs tent is more kind of my painting. It's more kind of a clean space, whereas the downstairs is more kind of a dirty space. Um, uh, this is my, the Jessups will remember this, but this is a picture of my dad. So I'm getting ready to do a painting of my dad like I did of my mom. So in the living room. So this is, I kind of start from a photograph. This is a photo, his college graduation. And then this is another friend of mine who passed. So. Some Colorado people might recognize her. That's Janet Dreyfus. So anyway, this is all my storage of pieces. I use these to make totem pieces. Um, they're just, this is all a lot of assortment of things I brought with me from Colorado. So, and, and
And these are more, more pieces that I use. I make a lot of dolls. And so, and these are some of the pieces, doll pieces up, up in here. So anyway, I think I'm gonna head back in so that we get a better uh, view or get better reception. I don't know if people can see, this is kind of a scan of the studio again. See all my, all my stuff, all the things I use. This piece here is, I'm, it's kind of in process. I'm gonna, it's gonna be um, rose quartz and then it'll be woven together. Um, so anyway, that's kind of in process. So uh, I'm trying to think if I, if there's any other questions. I kind of my philosophy about art is I believe that art heals. So um, doing art, I think is very healing. So I do teach classes. Um, I'll have classes, uh, sandblasting, mosaic, stained glass. Um, what else? Slumping, fusing, probably do some welding, some outdoor kinds of pieces, also classes. I'm not hearing anything. I hope you guys are all still there. Yep, everyone's still oh. here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. We got right. you. Everything sounds good. Okay, all right. Um, let's see if there's anything. I think that's it. My email address is carolsharp at gmail.com. And... I think that's about it, unless somebody's got some questions. Okay, everyone, does anyone have questions? You can uh, type them out on the chat. I think it would be okay to unmute yourself to ask a question at this point as well. Yeah, Terry North was asking about um, how do we find Carol's classes or website? Well, I hate, I'm sorry, but unfortunately my website is down right now. Um, but you can email me at carolsharp at gmail.com and I will put you on my list. There's my, if you can see that, carolsharp at gmail.com and my phone number is 303-477-4097. Awesome. Well, and maybe we can, uh, registers uh set something up through the art center to link it cool that'd be cool i will be i will put a website up again it's just currently down carol so, we have a, a question from connie um asking how many uh do you work on at once so mostly how many projects are you working on at one time oh a lot <laughs> because I'm always in process. Like I'll be working on painting, you know, pieces and then I'll get an assembly going. It just depends and it depends on what's going on. If I have a show coming up or if, um, you know, I have a commission piece, that kind of thing. But I just, I try and, or what I'm trying, like the piece with all the um, jello molds, that's just for myself. That was a piece I, got inspired to do actually even before I left Denver and I'm finally getting around to doing it. So, so sometimes it takes years. So. Awesome. Anyway. What so is yeah, your, I, what's your favorite medium? Glass. Yeah. Like stained glass or the fused glass. What, what do you, uh, you know, I like, I, one reason why I like glass is because of the color and the light. It always changes. I remember when I was a kid, my mom took a stained glass class and we had a piece that was on a stairway on the house at Lexington where we lived for years. And I remember noticing how the light changed with that. And so when I got to Colorado, actually almost the first year I was in Colorado, I took a stained glass class. And almost is like the glass bug bit me. So ever since then, I've been doing working with glass. I started doing flat glass, and then I got into doing three dimensional glass with the with the portraits and the bust. And then I did the lamps, and then I've just kind of gone on from there. Fusing, slumping. I do offhand blown glass, which is like the way they've been doing it for like three thousand years. 
Um, I haven't blown glass since I've been to Michigan. I haven't found a place to blow glass here in Michigan yet, but um, I'm working on that. But I do blow in Colorado. And sometimes when I, even when I go back to Colorado and visit, I will go blow glass there. So some of the blown glass is like nothing you've ever experienced. It's just amazing. The color, it's a combination of color, light, and then there's heat. Yeah. So, but it's pretty powerful when you're, you have a piece of wet newspaper between you and something that's like 2000 degrees. <laughs> so wow. it is, it's there and that you can like shape it just by how you hold your hand. It's pretty amazing. Really amazing. So blown glass is probably my total favorite. So um, Jennifer asked the question, do you still have the piece of mother? Hmm. No, uh, no, I did, four, I did actually five pieces, well, six pieces, if you can count the painting of mom, but I did four busts of my mother and all those are sold. And then I have one other piece that's a face, uh, like a wall piece, a ceramic wall piece, but that's the only piece in the painting are the only ones of my mom that I have left. So, yeah. I and think then... Margie says, nice picture of Janet. And she said, is that uh, a COVID painting that you're working on during quarantine? Yeah, although the one, the real one that's COVID is the one, the fish one. Mm. Um, that, that one, the one that people, somebody was asking about if it's boutique, because that one really is kind of about separation and isolation and that kind of that whole feeling like I mean that's that's just I don't know that's that's kind of been a little bit of art therapy that one there so the one of Janet and my dad are pieces I've wanted to do for years but I'm finally taking the time to do them partly because of the virus and partly because the studio's set up so I can work now so um I have a question uh, uh Carol when we were going through your, your art barn, you had showed us the rose quartz project. Was that the one with the jello molds that you had mentioned? Right, right, right. Can right. you tell us a little more about that piece? I'm curious about uh, how you're gonna, how that's gonna come together. Well, I'm gonna, each one of those is gonna be tied, you know, I'll put, aluminum's really soft. And so I use a lot of aluminum in the flowers that I do, the outdoor tinky and flowers. So anyway, I can punch holes in it and then I'll wire it all together and then it's gonna hang from a rod. Um, I, part of the reason why I'm using the rose quartz is rose quartz is a lot about self-love. So that kind of goes back to my feeling about, um, you know, art can be healing. And so I'm, I want to do that for me, you know, and so it'll be a piece that's kind of about my, me and my self-love. So that anyway, that's, but it'll, it's, I'm going to have, I found these little hearts in Tucson when I was there a couple of years ago. And so it's going to have crystal hearts on it. I'll have the rose quartz. And then in between the, the donut shapes, it'll be, they'll be weaving. So I, I will see. I know I kind of just wing it. I just kind of get an idea and then I kind of, it kind of evolves as I go along. I, I have some stones, I have the hearts. And um, so I don't, we'll see. Uh, I kind of, I'm excited about it, but it's still, I'm in the, it's just the very, very beginning. I've just been cleaning. Oh my gosh, cleaning those jello molds. It took me a couple hours just to do half of them. So it's going to have 49 jello molds. So 49 is a significant number. So anyway, to me, anyway. So, so it'll, it'll be interesting. I'll have to send you a picture once I get done. So um, <laughs> Connie asks, um, how will you incorporate the rose quartz? The, ro the rose quartz is going to be in each jello mold. So I don't know if you, I did kind of show a picture of that quickly, but um, so in each circle, the jello mold is going to be those, those rose quartz. So it's kind of a, remember, because you remember the jello, remember we used to get those and it had all that fruit cocktail and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So, so I, you know, anyway, the rose quartz in there is going to kind of, it's kind of like a fruit cocktail kind of thing. So anyway. <laughs> Um, Jennifer had asked if you showed the guests your Christmas ornaments. 
No, I didn't because the reception wasn't good down the basement. And most of those are packed away right now. Anyway. Okay. So, yeah, and it's a bummer yeah. because on our um, on our Tuesday practice run, there was no problem in the basement. Everything worked Yeah. Great. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's, yeah, it is. It's yeah. weird. It could know. just be what the day. Um, Peggy um, asks or says, I cat strings for the weaving would be cool. What did you say? What kind of strings? I cat. I, I don't I know what K A T strings. Oh. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'll have to look, have that, to look up. that up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I Google do time. have a lot. I do have a lot of old piano wires. So mm. we'll see. I don't know. I'll have to see. We'll see what happens. I just kind of put it together and see what inspires me. So It's tie-dyed, and I misspelled. Oh, oh, tie-dye. Oh, I, I just saw Peggy say that on the chat. Um, I do, I do do tie-dye. I'm a big tie-dye fan. That's another thing I'll be doing a class on, or having. I actually am going to have a tie-dye party. So that's Ooh, another thing. Um, once now the weather's nice and we can be outside on my porch where I showed you where I'm painting. That's where the classes will be held and in the studio. So upstairs in the studio or downstairs, depending on what we're doing. So, um, that's, that's kind of it. I can't think of anything else. Love that view of the river. It is, it is nice, isn't it? I'll tell yeah. you every day, every day I get to look at that. I feel I'm so grateful that I get to see that. So it, it changes every day too. The river kind of has a little personality. So anyway, pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, did anyone else have any other questions? <laughs> I have one. Okay. Hey, Carol, Hi, it's Jan. Hi, Jan. Hi. I like the cleanliness and organization of your studio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh thanks. That well, has, I, that yeah, has to be difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been, moving has been uh, an ordeal. So anyway, it has been a year of organizing and getting things. I'm finally at the place where I can start working. So, Yeah. I have another question. Um, I think like a lot of us that are, that do crafts, like we collect things and we're gonna make mm -hmm. something out of them. How mm -hmm. do I take it from a craft to an art form? How did you, how can you help me transition into that? Hmm. That's the age old question. I mean, I think that, um, Tahuli was was really instrumental in taking glass from a craft to an art form. So I really applaud him. He's a big inspiration for me. I, you probably didn't see, but in the studio, like by my grinder and whatnot, I have pictures of his because it's a big inspiration for me. So I think that um, part of it is just how you treat it. And part of it is just putting it out there in shows, you know, I mean, um, I just, I, I just think that we got to just, it's just, I don't know how else to say that I have, I have been, that has been something that's been said to me over the years. Cause I have shown my work, uh, especially my busts and whatnot. They have, they've been shown in a habitat gallery here in Michigan. A lot of people know about habitat and habitat. Um, I remember when I first put those in, a lot of the artists were saying they're too crafty, they're too crafty. But yet they did, the owner of the gallery saw them as art and I see them as art because it's a portrait, you know? So, so anyway, there is a lot, it is the age old question. And I think it's partly you just, keep, you gotta start entering shows. So you gotta keep entering shows and put it out there and let people know that it is an art form, so. Not a good answer, but I can't think of anything else to say to you right now. <laughs> so well, sorry. Well, and, no. and do remember the Anton Art Center has lots of opportunities for people to um, 
meet with other artists and to um, enter into shows and uh, our gift shop and things like that. So yeah. it's a way to, uh, you know, make a leap from into uh, an artist. Right. And I will, I also, I wanted to put a plug in for the uh, Anton Art Center. I am in the gift shop here. So I do have my work there in the gift shop. So um, that, that is a place where you can find my work once things open back up again. Hopefully they'll open back up at the end of the month. But I do have some of my, gift, a lot of the pieces that were down in the basement, they're at the Anton Art Center. So the ring holders and hearts and um, those things. So anyway <laughs> angels um, all those kinds of things i don't know if you can see the chat but jennifer had another uh question on whether you have a flyer uh put together that would share your history and the prices of your work i i don't currently no i don't but the best thing would be to call me or or email me and I can, you know, send you different prices or you can say, I like that piece in the dining room or that kind of thing. I will put some pictures. I can put, take some pictures of the basement that shows more of the lamps, those kinds of things. So, okay. um, yeah. And we can share that. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Well, I just really appreciate the Anton Art Center and you guys helping me out and letting me do this. And it's been great fun. And it's really fun to, to it's always fun to talk about your work and have people ask questions. And I just really appreciate all my friends from Colorado. Yay. You know, um, coming Jan, in. Jan is asking where else your art is displayed throughout the country. Hmm. Right now, just in uh, at my house here and in at the Anton Art Center. Um, those are the only two places I have not found galleries here in Michigan yet. So there is a gallery that I'm in in Colorado still. Um, it's in Morrison, Morrison, Colorado, and I will that will probably I'm going to be doing a show there in the fall of hopefully this fall. We'll see what happens with the COVID. Um, but the, it just, the plan was for her to open her gallery this summer and me to have a show there this summer. So that's coming up, but nothing, nothing in Michigan yet, but, um, I'm working on it. It'll happen. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Um, All right. Peggy, do you see any other questions coming through the chat box? Oh, uh, Peggy said that it's displayed in her kitchen, some of the artwork. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just thinking I didn't show the let's see if I can come on. Okay, there's 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 some of my kitchen artwork. Anyway. Oh that's over my kitchen sink. That's all blue, it's all cobalt blue glass. So I put shelves over my sink. So Anyway, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then I have these pieces in the kitchen. These are these are some birds that I did. So they're some of them some of them are, are friends, but these are all mosaics. So I take ceramic pieces and then I put them together the same way that I do. Um, it's copper foil. So anyway, some of them got legs. Um, don't anyway I think that's and then there's I have these there's some glass balls that it's kind of as a separator between the two rooms I have these glass balls Oops. anyway th so yeah anyway say the best for last something like that <laughs> awesome cool. all right well, thank you so much Carol um were there any last questions Maybe not. No, nope, I think we're Nothing good. in the chat. All right. Um, but if well, yeah. someone else uh, has uh, said that your artwork's also on her porch and in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of my, a lot of Colorado people got, have pieces. Um, That's great. So, it's, yeah. it's so cool that we were able to have people from Colorado join us today. Yeah. It's our first yeah. 
international or not international <laughs> cross country uh, sad art day. Yep. Cool. Cool. I like well, maybe it. we'll have to do it again. All right. Yeah. Maybe we can. Uh, I was saying maybe we can set you up for a virtual demonstration or something, Carol. Oh, that'd that be, would fun. be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. All right. Cool. Well. Um, if there are no other questions, then I think that uh, we can go ahead and bring this to a close. I really appreciate everybody signing in today to join us for this visit, uh, virtual visit to Carol's studio. Um, and a special thanks to those of you joining us from Colorado today. I do really appreciate it. I hope you'll check out the, um, the Art Center's website, www.theartcenter.org, um, or any of our social media platforms to get more details about some of our current and upcoming programming. We're trying to provide as much virtual opportunity as possible during this time when our facility is still close to the public. So if you have any suggestions, um, even on today's virtual studio visit, please feel free to email us. Uh, you can reach us um, either through my own email, P-G-I-L-C-H-R-I-S-T at theartcenter.org. Um, or if you navigate to our website, you can contact us through there as well. Um, thank you, everybody, again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start closing this out. I really appreciate everybody's participation today. I hope you have a good afternoon. All right. Thank you. <laughs>